Hello, welcome back. I'm with Alex Rodriguez, the VP of Corporate Dev over at O3 Mining, and we're at the Pressure Metal Summit in Zurich. Alex, good to see you. Good to see you, dear. Um, obviously, there's, for me, it's a, it's a real privilege to have you back on. And, and for those uh, less familiar, we've, we've, we've done a few interviews in the past with uh, Jose, uh, and we were actually on site not too long ago. So I, watch out for that video, because it's going to be amazing. Um, but Let's, let's just dig in at the moment. Well, why don't you just tell people and remind people who O3 Mining are? For sure, O3 Mining is a Canadian developer based in, uh, based in Toronto, headquarters in Toronto, with assets in Quebec, in the Valdor camp particularly. We have our main project for Marban Alliance. It's a project that is with a pre-feasibility study done back in October last year. It's just giving you a MPV worth $463 million that right now is basically four times our current market cap. And I think the unique situation with this project uh, is that it's just 12 kilometers to the Canadian Mall Arctic Mine, which is owned by a Nico Eagle, and which, by the way, is the largest gold mine in Canada today. Yeah, so you're, you're based in the Valley of Gold, Valdor. Exactly. Uh, 50 million ounces of historic production. Um, and obviously, when, and what was very fascinating when, I was, when, I, when we were there was, and I, I guess people will see this in the video that we release, is there is literally a mine every couple of hundred meters, or a couple of hundred yards. You're along this Cadillac, uh, Cadillac Lada Lake fold, and it's it's just full of gold mineralization. And and like you right, you were saying there, it's um, Canadian Malartic, the largest North American open pit. And you have, have, if you move from left to right, from e uh, east to west, you have uh, El Dorado with the Lamac mine. It's just meters from our Alpha property. If you move more again, you have Goldex from Nico Eagle. You have Kina from Wesdom. All these companies are worth it right now $2 billion to $1 billion to $35 billion that is worth it right now in Nico Eagle. And we just have this project in the same camp. And the idea is really, when I highlight why we are here, is because it'll tell you, speak to you about the endowment that is in this camp, but also tells you about the infrastructure that is around us. That I believe all the companies working together, all mining companies working together, is going to be something, a win-win scenario for everyone. Mining companies, stakeholders, the communities, authority. I think it's got a really good, uh, what we call, try to call the circular economy. I think that's, we want to be part of that. And I think there's some opportunity here to benefit from that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, why don't we just remind people of what's in the ground at the moment? That would be probably a good start. So right now we have a project, uh, Marban Alliance has, we have 2.9 million ounces right now. Right now we're finalizing our program here. We're doing a, a, a program to, uh, to the extension of the, Lar of the Arctic pit. We're called the Arctic extension. That's doing right now, as we speak, we have one drill right now turning there. And next year, our objective is to do a campaign of 28,000 meters at the Malarty Cage deposit that we just announced this year. We had 342,000 ounces here, right now in inferred category. And our plan is to do an infer campaign so we can convert those ounces from inferred to indicated. If we're able to successfully convert those ounces, that means that we can use those ounces into the, the mine plan for the feasibility study. And that means also that we expect an increase of life of mine only on the basis of adding those ounces of more or less one or two years. Wow. And something that you've announced more recently, which, it, which I'm quite excited to hear about because it wasn't something that we, we knew about. We knew that it was potentially there, but we weren't 100% sure if, if you were definitely going to find it. But that was the VMS potential, yeah. potential at Horizon. Could you potentially just touch on that and what does yeah, that mean? So we just announced this, uh, I would say, Monday, uh, yesterday. And this news was around about that we have a property that is called Horizon, just northwestern of Marban Alliance, that has, based on our first results, our first real falls, it shows that we're in the right environment for BMS. BMS stands for Volcanic Massive Sulfites. And what it really tells you, because I'm not a geologist, I'm a, I'm a finance, uh, uh, I will say a finance, a finance person, but the way I understand it is that when you find a BMS deposit, you're in an environment where you will find high-grade deposits that has polymetallic content, but also precious metal content. And those are, historically, we have seen in the camp as well. Um, we believe it will take us some work to finally find that one, but we right now we have confirmed we're in the right environment to find this type of deposit. Yeah, good. Okay, and something else I really wanted to touch on since, since we were on site was actually the sustainability aspects. Obviously, you've just been recognized by PDAC as the leading junior mining company in that space in terms of sustainability and you'll be awarded for that in march um i think it's worth we, we touched on this a lot in the video but i think it is really worth emphasizing 
your relationship with all stakeholders and, and how you're managing that at the moment? That's, I would say, completely kudos to the team that we have in Baldor is led by Mirza, Mirza Velo. Um, I believe since 2020, 2020, 2019, but 2020 more or less, when we start doing the PA and knowing that this project was moving to production, we really put in place a program to engage with all the stakeholders. And it's been a silent work in a sense, because sometimes we do not get too much, uh, too much uh, likes because of that, but we did the work. We engaged with the communities. We did different meetings and meetings, um, a lot of workshops. We have been there trying to get their feedback, talking to different authorities. We did really do a lot of work to engage with them. And I think uh, the PDAC recognizing that is just speaking to the work that has been done in these last three years. And I speak as well for the future. It's telling you that we're a company that was trying to do the, the, the things in the right way, respecting our stakeholders and really aiming to achieve a social license. They were working towards that. And hopefully once we hit the feasibility study, we will initiate the permitting process at that point. And I believe as we keep moving our standards and we keep working with that particular, uh, I would say mentality and vision, we are confident that we, by doing the, doing the things right, we should be obtaining our main goal of being a producer. One of the main things I really noticed and one of the main, one of the main aspects, especially on the social side, was obviously you, we're getting to a point now where the largest open pit in North America, Canadian Malartic, is coming towards the end of its life. And really to sustain the number of jobs and the economic welfare of the population around you, there needs to be a divergence from those workers in the open pit to another open pit. That, that, that seems to be a logical solution. And that's really what you have there at Marban Alliance is, and, and even to go further than that, it's, it's not so much just the job creation, it's also there is this excess capacity at Agnico Eagle's um, processing facility of around 40,000 tons per day, where they've, they've openly spoken about either toll milling or looking for nuances in the region. And one of their latest press releases actually mentioned that they are actively looking to see where they can find throughput to, to maximize that as they go into the Odyssey Underground Line. Um, so I guess, I guess from your point of view, this, this isn't just bringing a new mine in production, this is actually holding together the economic stability of, of the region, surely? Absolutely, I think you point something really important and this is goes, ties nicely with this idea of circular economy. Yes, we have right now a project that is moving towards production. It's going to be a new mine, but this new mine is really trying to fit that gap, fill that gap, meaning that, again, we're talking about our neighbors having this excess capacity, again, what their plans are, as you were saying, they were talking about finding new nuances, exploring toll milling agreements. And for us, that's great that we're talking about that because that opens an opportunity for us as a neighbors, as another mining company in this camp, to open those discussions. And hopefully, because we're not, we don't have any certainty of that happening, hopefully we end up working together. And we end up using that infrastructure they have in place. We start sending our 60,000 tons per day there. And that will, at the end of the day, benefit everyone and eventually them will benefit us. But we're talking about only our neighbor. There is other infrastructure in the camp that exists that has also an excess capacity. So I'm just talking in general. In the BTV, we have excess capacity and we need to find ways for us to work together. Because as you were saying, if a mining is shifting from an open pit to underground, there is skilled labor that is going to be there that we need to maybe benefit from that. This, they will move to the next mine and we just keep that, uh, I will say, the wealth of Valdora Malartic there without having that impact. And obviously, if we don't build a tailings or a processing plant, the footprint is less. So we still have a mine creating wealth, but our impact to the area that we're operating is less. And I think that's, that's really great for everyone. Could you, could you just remind us in the PFS what the just the breakdown was in terms of costs for the tailings and the, and the mill? And if you were, because obviously it's very economic on its own if you are to go down that route, but it's interesting just to know the breakdown um, of what those costs are. So potentially people could do some mental maps. For sure. So right now our CapEx, initial CapEx, based on the pre feasibility study is $435 million. From that number, $160 million goes to the processing plan and $40 million, $45 goes to the tailings. So altogether, I will say in the in the range of $200 million. 
So we're talking about on a scenario that we can use an existing infrastructure in the BTP camp, our capex will reduce most likely to a half of that, yeah. right? And that's in, uh, that would say that makes the project, I would say, um, more, I will say more accessible for financing because now we're talking about a company trading at $120 million looking for a financing of $200 million than looking for 400. Not saying that we cannot make that happen, but I'm saying like, it just make the, the I will say that the, 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 the roadmap is much, I will say it's a, it's a faster, faster Yeah, it's, it's, it's a much simpler idea for people to get their heads around. One of the things that we weren't able, able to really touch on as much when we were in Valdor was actually Alpha. So I wouldn't mind touching on that at the moment because what I love about Alpha is really you've got another fast track route with an existing infrastructure to actually get into production pretty quickly. So you've, you've got an option, and I think it's until 2026, isn't it, on the Orobel Mill. Maybe you could just touch on the resource in the ground at Alpha and the option with the mill and, and really how you're looking at that project at the moment. Because I know so much focus is going on to Marban Alliance, but that in itself is a very, very good asset. And that's a great question. Right now, Alpha, we have 1.2 million ounces. Before that, we had like 700,000 ounces. So since 2019, we're able to increase the ounces from that number to 1.2 million ounces. The beauty of Alpha, as you were saying, is that we have, I will say, four sectors. It's a big property. And the, I will say the beauty of Alpha is that it's a lot of gold in this big land, in, in this big land package. We just have to set which will be the deposit that will go first. There is an open pit potential at Akasaba, that by the way, is just next to the Akasaba West project owned by Agnico Eagle, which they are right now uh, operating. They're mining that deposit and shipping the ore to Goldex. We move into the east, we have a bulldog deposit that is underground resources. And if you move a little bit north, you will have uh, the Omega sector that is just near distance to the Lamac, uh, Lamac mine. So again, all these different factors around us is just pointing out that there is a nice land package here with a lot of gold here. It's just need, we need to assess which one of these deposits will go first. Yeah. And yes, we have the option of the Orbital Mill. It's a mill that is uh, nameplate is 1,400 tons per day. And uh, I believe right now for O3, our take our mouth alpha is that we have this property that is worth it. It's really worth it given the different structure we have available, given the location we are and the different neighbors we have. Right now, we just being allocated all our dollars to Marvel Alliance because we have right now a better, uh, I would say, a, a higher ROI at this point. And you might understand market conditions really push us as, a, as, a man, as management to really look for those, uh, put the money where we can see uh, if there's going to be a better return for shareholders. Not saying that you don't do it in alpha, but right now it's the focus has been doing that. I would say once Marvel Alliance is, we complete the feasibility study, that's going to be a time for us to reassess and see how much we want to now go back to Marvel to, to alpha and see how much many meters we want to want to drill in this, in this property. Brilliant. And I guess as we're in an investment conference, um, what, what are the main, what are the main, I guess, interests or concerns from investors that you're hearing, obviously you're doing quite a lot of meetings with different funds here. Uh, what, what are the way they're looking at the company? Are, are there any, are there any common questions that you're, you're finding at the moment? I think the common question is, I guess one of the big questions was, how are you going to finance this project? Yeah. But at the moment I explained it to them, the synergies that are around, I think that clarified any concern that existed. That's one piece. The second piece is what you intend to do next year, or if there's going to be an event, because this synergy that I'm talking to you, that's again, through was value creation. We finding more ounces is value creation. We doing this value creation, but there is an opportunity for looking for people who are looking for the event, for the transaction to happen. For that, we also have that. We're able to sign a total million agreement with a neighbor, with a partner in the BTP camp. That will be an event that is important because they will capitalize on the fact that this project now, basically, we become a, just getting permits to do a query, just yep. to open a mine, right? So that's an event. Second event, we are successfully going to be able to convert these ounces from indic from inferred to indicated next year. Other events, we still have a portfolio of investment. We own Moneta Gold, twenty percent. We own Cartier Resources, fourteen percent. So. Different aspects come to the next year as we decide to do what is the best, I will say, what is the best plan for O3 as we try to move Marvel Alliance to production. But to your point, I think that the, the, the main idea is trying to understand 
where we are with our plans to put this in production and what are the different alternatives we have. And I think we have, we have plenty. Yeah, that's the thing. And this is what's so interesting is you've got so many catalysts around the corner and it, you're likely to be the next gold mine in production, not only just in the Abitibi, but potentially in, Valdo in, um, in Quebec itself. So no, I'm, I'm enjoying the progress. Alex, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time having me here. Thank, thank you. you.